today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can create amazing vigilante characters and stories for your own mangas, comics, or light novels. I hope you enjoy this video and it helps you with your creative projects. First of all, let's discuss what a vigilante is and what makes up the vigilante genre itself. A vigilante is a type of character that takes on the role of bringing justice and taking down criminals even though it is not in their authority to do so. Usually a vigilante takes on this role where the true law enforcers may fail. Characters like Naofumi Iwatani can be examples of good vigilantes who do this with a sense of bringing justice to the world and wanting to help others. <laughs> However, also keep in mind that there can be vigilantes who are more like anti-heroes like Light Yagami from Death Note who do this with their own sense of justice even though other people may think that it's not morally correct what this character is doing. The vigilante genre itself focuses on characters like these going on their own missions and following their own sense of justice. It is usually mixed with another genre like crime, mystery, thriller, or sometimes even fantasy. One important thing to keep in mind is that vigilantes can be any character type and there can also be varying levels of vigilantism. If your character is defying some sort of law or rule, then they can be classed as a vigilante regardless of how big that law is that they are actually breaking. So for example, a school student may end up becoming a vigilante when they decide to help their bullied friends as their teachers are not doing anything about it. A character might decide to solve mysteries and use this knowledge to stop robberies before they happen. Or at the highest point of vigilantism, a character might try taking down or capturing criminals themselves which is going against the law and is actually illegal. A common misunderstanding when writing vigilantes is that I think a lot of writers may forget that vigilantism is actually illegal and so when you're writing vigilantes in your story or writing something in the vigilante genre, you have to keep in mind that the laws and rules are very important to understand before you actually create the vigilante character. It should not be so easy for your characters to break and defy these laws regardless of what kind of motive this character has. I recommend that for your vigilante story, you first come up with some set laws or rules in the world of your story. That way when your character may decide to break these laws, you also have in mind what the consequences are for this action. Even if you're creating this story in a fantasy or supernatural world, having a basic law system in place can really help you to know what the consequences are behind your character's actions, and it also makes your characters more responsible for what they are doing in your story. It means that when there is something they do, when there is a cause, there is also a effect. So my first tip for writing in the vigilante genre is to create two versions of your vigilante character. One of the best ways to create a good vigilante character is to not only consider who they are now, but also who they were before. You see, vigilantes have to go through a lot of changes before they actually become a vigilante. Therefore, in most cases, a vigilante will actually have two versions, the version who they were before becoming a vigilante and the character they are after becoming a vigilante. So first consider what they were like before becoming a vigilante. What did a day in their life look like and what kinds of things did they do? What were their values and motives when they were that kind of person? They may have seen the world in a more positive light, been a kinder person and maybe they wanted to help others more. Then after a turning point, they need to become someone else. It's likely that after this turning point, their values and motives would change, their goals may change and their perception of the world would likely change as well. This is the version of them after becoming a vigilante and they now see the world and have very different goals to the person they were before. This is why I suggest you see them as almost like two different characters because their personalities will be so vast and different and this new vigilante character is someone who should reflect aspects of their old self but also be a very different character entirely. The second tip is give them a turning point. After you have created two versions of your vigilante character, you need to also consider giving them a turning point. The turning point is what turns them from this character they were before into the vigilante character they are now. And it has to be a pretty serious turning point because your character wouldn't suddenly wake up one day and say, I'm going to go take down these criminals. There has to be a really good reason behind why your character would become this other type of character in the span of whatever time period this situation occurs in. For example, someone very close to the main character may have been murdered, but the authorities refuse to look any more into this investigation. Therefore, your vigilante character may decide to take action themselves, causing them to go down a new route and path. 
Using the school example from earlier, maybe your main character has a friend that's being really badly bullied at school, but the teachers refuse to do anything. So your main character decides to take action on themselves and decide to help their friend and stop these bullies from targeting their friend. So in order to decide what your character's turning point should be, consider what kind of character they need to become. Who is the vigilante character you have? Depending on how vast the change is and who they become will help you to decide what kind of turning point and experience they should face in order to become this particular character type. My third tip is give them functional clothing suitable for their life. In order to show your vigilante's new life, they also should have some very functional clothing that helps them to do the things in their day-to-day -day life. Now it can be something simple or something more complex depending on what your vigilante needs to do. In superhero comics, this usually means your character getting a new outfit and new tools alongside that outfit to help them to take down criminals. So for your own vigilante, consider what they really need to do in their day-to-day -day life to solve their own missions and follow their own sense of justice. If it is a superhero vigilante, a costume that is easy to move around in and functional and has all of the tools they need would be the most suitable for this particular character type. For a school vigilante, a school uniform or an outfit that helps them to blend in would be the most suitable for this particular character type. For a vigilante that wants revenge and goes out into quite dire circumstances, they might want to have a costume that hides their identity. So no matter what kind of vigilante character you have, it's really important that they have a costume or an outfit that helps them in their day-to-day -day lives. Otherwise, your readers might be wondering, why does this character have this particular kind of costume when it doesn't have any purpose? Giving your character a functional costume means it will make them more realistic and believable as characters and your readers will also want to believe more in the mission and sense of justice your character is following. My fourth tip is give them a strong and meaningful goal. Another important thing to keep in mind when creating a vigilante character is it's also really important to give your vigilante a strong and meaningful goal. It has to be a strong enough goal to make them want to defy the law and authorities and follow their own mission. It also has to be enough to make your readers want to root for this character and want to see your character succeed in their goals. Your readers will likely not want to see your character tracking down criminals just for the sake of it. If there is no purpose, then the story can quickly lose meaning. But what if your character was tracking down criminals trying to find out who kidnapped his family? Now there is a purpose, something to follow. There is a main goal here that readers would likely be interested to see to its fulfillment. When a character becomes a vigilante, they need to have a really good reason behind it. And as I mentioned before, in the turning point, they wouldn't suddenly decide to just track down criminals for the sake of it. They need a really solid goal and this goal should carry them throughout the story and make them achieve various things. This also means that your story won't lose focus as well. If your character constantly has a goal that they're striving towards, it means that there's always something that you can work towards as the writer of your story. Also, keep in mind that the goal doesn't necessarily have to be a good goal. It doesn't have to be morally good. As I said, vigilante characters can be good characters or they can be bad characters. They can be villains. So the goal itself doesn't have to be a good goal. It just has to be something that is important to the vigilante character themselves. It needs to be something that would make sense for your character to suddenly become a vigilante. And regardless of whether it is a good or a bad goal, it just needs to be a goal that is important enough to your character character. My fifth tip is consider the time and location for your story. Now I want to discuss more about the universe your story may be placed in. The first thing you need to do when considering this is consider the time and location your vigilante story is set in because depending on the time and location and the place the laws and rules are going to be very very different and as I mentioned earlier laws and rules in a vigilante story are something very important to keep in mind. If your story was set in the 19th century, for example, then the rules would likely be very different from in the 21st century. If your story is set in a fictional world, then the laws in that story might be very different from the laws in our current society. No matter where your story is taking place, make sure you write down what the laws of that area and time actually are. Write down things about what happens to criminals in your story, what the current laws and rules are like, and how the justice system is. In this way, you can develop something unique for your particular location. And if your story is taking place in a specific location or time, like the 19th century, the Middle Ages, or even Roman times, ensure that you research the laws of that location to keep things accurate for the story you are telling. The sixth tip is show the problem with the law in your story. 
A common trait in vigilante stories is that usually there is an issue with the current law enforcement in the story. After all, if there was no issue with that law in the story, your character would see no need to defy it. In order to express this in your story, you need to consider what the problem actually is. Are the laws just not helping the people? Are there so many criminals rising up that the police just cannot handle this number of criminals? Are the laws simply old and outdated? What is the problem here? When you show the problem from the start, it makes it more believable when the character stands up for themselves and decides to defy these laws and find a solution for themselves. After all, if there is no problem to begin with, how will there be a solution? My seventh tip is show the main antagonist or enemy. So in a vigilante genre story, usually the vigilante themselves will be the main character. They will be the protagonist, whether or not they are a good character or a bad character. Therefore, you also need to establish an antagonist that will be the main blockage of the story. But when doing this, and this might seem a little bit complicated, you need to consider one main thing. Is your antagonist considered to be good or bad in the world of your story? For example, in the world of Death Note, even though Light is the protagonist, Light doesn't do a lot of good things. Alternatively, L is the antagonist in this setting, even though he does a lot of good things, simply because he opposes Light's goal. Light is the main character, he is the protagonist, so whether or not he does good or bad things, because the story is revolving around him, that still makes him the protagonist, and because L is opposing that, that still makes him the antagonist. So you really need to think about this. In the world of your story, is your antagonist someone who is actually bad in moral terms, or are they just an antagonist that opposes the protagonist's goals? When it comes to an actual bad enemy who does morally bad things, you need to consider why they are such a problem. What bad things are they actually doing? And when it comes to an antagonist who is simply defying the protagonist and are not morally bad, you need to consider why they are doing this. Why is it so important for your antagonist to defy the protagonist? Because while your protagonist should have an important and meaningful goal, you should also give your antagonist an important and meaningful goal also, something that makes them want to defy the protagonist. And when you give them both goals, it's going to be more entertaining for your readers to see these characters clash. The eighth tip is show the tone of the world. The tone of the world is more about the feeling and atmosphere your readers may experience when they are reading your book. World tone can be shown through a number of things. How much money people seem to have, the different classes of the world, how much criminal action is in the world, and the overall theme of the world. Let's talk about the first one, which is how much money people seem to have. Now this also ties into the second one, which is how many different classes seem to be in the world, how many social classes seem to be in the world. In the world of your story, you may have a few different social classes. So the richer people might wear more expensive clothes and be allowed certain luxuries, such as traveling in a certain method or eating in specific places. You might also have people in poorer social classes, and you can show this through the clothes they wear and what they do in their daily life compared to the more upper class people. In your world, in your story, it might help you with the world building if you give specific names to the different classes in your story. For just a random example, the rich people in your story could be called the butterflies and the poorer class people could be called the grubs. That is just one example of naming different things in your world building to help make your world building feel more realistic and believable. As well as this, also consider how much criminal action is actually in the world. If your world is running rampant with criminals, then you may need a whole vigilante group in order to step up and stop this. But if your criminals are far and few, then there would be less need for a whole vigilante group to be formed. And finally, the overall theme of the world is how your world appears from the outside. It appears clean and secure on the outside, but is actually really bad and dangerous on the inside. Or does it seem like a gritty place where there might be a lot of criminals there? Think about your world and the main themes of it and write down a few keywords to help you to describe it. My knife tip is give your main character a main weakness or flaw. Every character should have some kind of flaw, and this also goes for your main protagonist. No one is perfect and your characters should never be completely flawless either. Consider what flaw or weakness your vigilante character may have that stops them from doing things too easily. For example, they may have a certain ability that is just as much of a problem as it is a help. For example, random teleportation. You could also have a character flaw like trusting people too easily, falling for traps too quickly, or just not being good at thinking before they act. A character flaw adds another blockage to your character that helps them to be more realistic and believable. It also means that there might be people out there reading your book and they can also relate to the character flaw your character has, which means they can relate more to the story you are telling. My 
10th tip is integrate vigilantism into your chosen genres. When writing a vigilante story, vigilante itself is not really a genre you can fully focus on. It's usually paired up with at least one or two more genres. I recommend you write down what other genres you have in order to focus on something that is more exciting and fulfilling. When you mix it together with other genres, it means you could create a story much more easily. Vigilante stories are normally paired with the genres crime, thriller, mystery or horror, but they can also be paired up with any other genre. I want to try and create something unique by pairing up the vigilante genre with something like shoujo, fantasy, slice of life or even comedy. My 11th tip is to determine what the end goal is. The end goal of the story might be your character's main goal, however this isn't always the case. In the circumstance that your character does eventually fulfill their goal, you need to consider what the end goal of the story is. What goal needs to be fulfilled in order to effectively end your story? Is it to stop all of the criminals in the town, or is it to make a change in the justice system? Is it for your character to simply get the life they were living before back? The end goal can help you as the author to know consistently what you are really working towards. By keeping the end goal consistently in mind, you ensure that you don't stray away from the story and you keep motivated to create it from beginning to end. Thank you so much for watching my video today everyone. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. Let me know what kind of vigilante characters or stories you're creating because I would really love to hear about them. Feel free to chat with me on any of my social media at Midnight's Cross because I always enjoy hearing from you. Again, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye!